हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल सी एस एन आई टी ट्यूटोरियल बाय वृशाली इन अवर प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट फाइल मैनेजमेंट इन डिटेल विद एग्जांपल्स आई हैव अटैच अ कंप्लीट ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम प्लेलिस्ट लिंक इन बिलो डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स नाउ इन टूडे सेशन वी विल डिस्कस अनादर मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज आयो मैनेजमेंट इन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम लेट स्टार्ट द सेशन so previously we have already discussed all the subjects in detail with solve examples practical demonstration and simple explanation this all subjects playlist will be useful for your university exam gate exam as well as interview purpose so please share my channel with your friends and subscribe it now in today's session we will discuss first what exactly io management in operating system organization of io function then io buffering techniques at the end some important question bank now let's see all these points one by one the first question is what exactly io management in operating system io means input output management in operating system we all are familiar with the different input and output devices which connected to our system input devices like keyboard mouse then scanner output devices like monitor printer then speaker projector right we all are familiar with this in our daily life we use all these applications so it is a responsibility of operating system to control all the input and output devices they ensure that smooth fast and error free data transfer between the system also this all io devices performing proper accurate operations like reading file saving document printing the file then sending data over the network right so to manage each and everything which is called as io management and this is the responsibility of operating system the next topic is organization of io function so there are total four main io functions in operating system the first io function is called as programmed io here cpu is fully involved when system perform the communication or data transferring operation it means that cpu continuously check the status of input output devices i am giving you one simple example see we are using the keyboard for typing purpose right so when user press the particular key cpu directly send this data to the operating system and when user not press the key this cpu goes to the waiting state basically they continuously check the status of input output devices and as per that status they perform send or receive operations this is called program io here cpu is fully involved in communication next function is called as interrupt driven io interrupt means interrupt signal see here cpu is busy with the other work for example we are using the mouse right so when user click the mouse button a particular interrupt signal will be generated and this signal is goes to the cpu and after getting interrupt signal then only they send data to the operating system that's why it is called as interrupt driven io here cpu is not fully involved in communication when they get the interrupt signal then only they perform the particular action otherwise cpu is busy with the other work got it now the next organizational io function is called as direct memory access here system used one special hardware between the communication and this special hardware is called as dma controller here input output devices send data directly to main memory via dma controller there is no direct involvement of cpu in this communication cpu just send source address destination address and amount of data to the dma i am giving you one simple example suppose user want to copy 2 gb file from external hard disk to ram so this operation have performed through dma controller and after completing this operation dma send interrupt signal to the cpu at that time cpu is busy with the other work but this interrupt signal tell us 
that a particular operations have completed. So this is called as direct memory access function. Now the last function is called as pooling. Here all the data sent by input output devices are stored in one spool which is also called as queue. I am giving you one simple example. We all are familiar with this. See we are using the printer right and we want to print a particular document. Suppose a particular document carry total 20 pages and we want to print it. So we just click on the print button. So printer print all these pages one by one, right? Suppose printer print currently page number one. So remaining pages like page number two to page number 20. These all pages are stored in one queue and this operation is called as spooling. So these all are the organizational I.O. functions. The next topic is called as I.O. buffering. This is one of the most important topic for your exam point of view. So what exactly buffering? See, we all are familiar with this condition. When you watch a particular video on YouTube, so due to some low internet connection or due to some any reason, a particular video goes to the buffering state. They goes to the loading state, right? So this is called as I.O. buffering. As we discussed earlier, there are multiple input output devices and they perform the communication with each other parallelly, right? So this I.O. buffering technique improve the efficiency, accuracy of input output operations. Basically, they manage the complete flow of data between the input and output devices and they also try to reduce the number of IO operations. There are total three input output buffering techniques like single buffer, double buffer and circular buffer. So let's discuss all this technique in detail with example. The first type of IO buffering is called as single buffer. See here in this particular diagram, operating system allocate only one buffer between input and output devices. We will understand this concept with example. Assume that user typing something by using keyboard and this data will be typed on Microsoft Word application. Okay, so keyboard is your input device and Microsoft Word application, this is your output device. So on the first step, see here, producer is the keyboard. Keyboard produce the multiple text, right? So user typing here and all this data goes to the buffer. Uh, this is done by the operating system. After that, when this buffer get the enough data or we can say when user pause the typing, so this buffer sent towards the Microsoft Word application. So here a particular data will display to the user. Here user process the data, right? But what happened here? There is a only one buffer, right? So when this buffer used by output devices, this input devices goes to the waiting state. That's why the delay and poor performance is there. When new characters can be typed only when this buffer is empty, right? So this is called as single buffer. The next type of IO buffering is called as double buffer. Here operating system allocates double means two buffer between input and output devices. Again, let understand with the example. Assume that a particular program want to read large number of file from the hard disk. Here input output devices start reading that particular file and this data sent to the buffer 1. When your buffer 1 is full, so operating system send buffer 1 to the user for their working purpose. And at the same time, input output devices start filling data in buffer 2. It means that there is no any waiting state, right? All the operations perform parallelly. When user process finish the buffer 1, so buffer 2 is already ready, right? No one goes to the waiting state. So that's why double buffer is more effective as compared to single buffer. In single buffer, system goes to the waiting state. But here, no any other waiting state. They continuously read data and fill data in first buffer 1 then buffer 2 continuously. So this is called as double buffer.
The last type of IO buffering is called as circular buffer. Here, operating system allocate more than two buffers between input and output devices. Again, let's understand with this example. See, any online live session, streaming videos, or uh, watching live cricket match, for all this purpose, circular buffer is used. What happened here? See, here, camera feed. They work like a input output devices. So camera feed arrived and store all the data first in buffer one. And when buffer one is full, video player display all the frames in buffer one to the user. And at the same time, camera feed fill next data in buffer two. Similarly, when buffer is full, again they fill data in buffer T3 continuously, right? means multiple buffers are there and player play all the buffers in sequence in continuous manner. So when you watch live video, so live video never getting pods, right? Because buffer, all the buffers are rotated in circular manner. So this is called as circular buffer in operating system. Now, as per your previous year question paper, the one of the most important question is what is IO buffering? why IO buffering is needed, state and explain different approaches of IO buffering for 8 marks. So this question recurrently asked in every paper, right? Next is explain IO function with example for 6 marks and explain spooling with example for 4 marks. So I am suggesting you please prepare IO buffering topic in detail with examples. So thank you. This is all about IO buffering. Please subscribe the channel and keep learning.